Welcome back. This is still the Thursday edition of the nation's most favorite breakfast show, Good Morning Namibia. The Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation will hold the 17th session of the Dr. Theo ben Gurirap Lecture Series under the theme, Improving the Horticulture and Crop Farming Value Chain for Self-Employment. The lecture will be taking place this Friday, the 19th of August, 2022, in Otapi in the Omsati region. On the line from Otapi to talk to us about the lecture series is Ms. Berta Makari, Director of Information and Research at the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation. Good morning, ma'am, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Good morning, Denver, and the uh, NBC viewers and listeners, and thank you for having me. How are you doing on this gift of a Thursday, and how is Otapi? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, uh, Otapi is also great. It's a bit chilly, though, this morning, but uh, everything is going fine this side. We're happy to hear that. For those Namibians, those viewers who may not yet be familiar with the Dr. Theo Ben Gurirap lecture series, what exactly is it about? Uh, thank you for the question, Denver. Uh, the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation introduced uh, the Dr. Theo Ben Gurirap lecture series, and it was named actually after the first Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Theo Ben Gurirap. Uh, and the, the series was launched on the 31st July 2017 by His Excellency Dr. Hakeji Gengok, the President of the Republic of Namibia. Now, to answer our questions, maybe uh, the aim of the Dr. Theo Ben Gurirap lecture series is essentially to inform and uh, encourage the public about uh, uh, contemporary or, or, or current global events and also to encourage the public uh, to be involved on taking an interest in shaping the Namibia's policy on international relations, just in short. Thank you very much for that overview. Now, one is unable to think of the late Dr. Theo Ben Gurirap <coughs> being the seasoned diplomat that he was uh, without thinking of Namibia's foreign policy or Namibia's, Namibia's policy on international relations. Please talk to us about the policy and refer to some of its fundamentals. Uh, the Namibian policy on international relations uh, was adopted by Parliament in 2017, and it has actually set uh, uh, poverty eradication as a top priority among government's uh, policy uh, priorities. So the, the policy itself contain, uh, comprise a set of uh, uh, 10 chapters. So just to briefly name the chapters, the first one talk, talked about uh, the mandate of the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation. Uh, the second one, it talks about the principles and practice of diplomacy. The third one, Namibia's diplomacy, a historical background. The fourth one, first chapter, talked about contemporary global sectors. The fifth topic talked about economic diplomacy. The sixth topic talked about issues on national priority. The seventh topic talked about bilateral relations and cooperation. The eighth topic talked about multilateral relations and cooperation. And the ninth topic talked about public diplomacy and Namibia's image. And the last topic talked about... Uh, uh, the professionalization, the professionalization foreign, of the foreign service. And just as you say, maybe to highlight the key points, um, the first chapter actually talk about the mandate. And the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation is actually the mandate of, of it is tasked with managing Namibia's policy on international relations and cooperation as stipulated in Article 96 of the Namibian Constitution with the overarching objective of protecting the national interest abroad. Uh, maybe just to enlighten the public about the national interest of the country, mm. uh, uh, they are actually deep-rooted well, in the Namibia's domestic priorities, which is to create wealth, uh, 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 eradicate poverty, and to promote international peace and security. And that is why I said the policy has set poverty eradication as a top priority among government policy priorities. 
without a doubt, a very comprehensive policy and with very noble and very clear goals. Now, it's almost impossible to believe, but it's already the 17th lecture series that will be taking place tomorrow. If we were to take stock of the journey thus far, let's please briefly talk about the successes of the series thus far, but also look at its impact. Uh, thank you again for the question. Question. Since, since the launch of the Dr. Theo Ben Guda lecture series, the ministry hosted uh, uh, 16 successful lecture series. Now, due to the popular demand from the public and the huge interest of the youth, in particular, uh, in participating in, in the lecture, the lecture series will, will now be, be held on a monthly basis to include the South. Uh, west and the north uh, region of the country so that we can ensure that uh, no one should be left out. Now, to answer your question on the impact of the lecture series is that uh, now through the Dr. Theo ben lecture series, the public is informed about the work of the ministry and also making the Namibian people understand how they can relate to the ministry. So the, the, the last three lecture series then well, were the most viewed with a total of more than 10,000 social media audiences who tune in on the MICO and NBC platform, more importantly, uh, uh, making comments and uh, asking questions that were actually addressed by, by, the, by the lecture. Also, may, maybe importantly, the Theo ben lecture series is also part of the performance agreement of our Honorable Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, the Prime Minister, Deputy, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of International Relations. And uh, the impact report is compiled after the, the lecture. And at the end, uh, it's also, also formed part of uh, her quarterly performance review report. Now, some of the members of the public also have requested for the impact report and it was made available to them. Uh, uh, that's what I can say then. Uh, Thank now you, that also the lecture is also streamed live on NBC and Mirko, social media platform, the audience can always go back and listen and get more information. Thank you, Madam Amakali. Now, the theme for this year's series is the horticulture and crop farming value chain for self-employment. Please unpack the theme for us, specifically its relevance in as far as it relates to the Omsati region. There's normally, the themes of the Theo ben Lecture Service are always chosen in consultation with the governor's office in a specific region. Now, this specific one, a uh, uh, theme that talks about improving the horticulture and crop farming value chain for self-employment, is important in a sense that uh, uh, the Omusati region, according to its governor, Ergenes Ndjala, advocate for agriculture and horticulture in his um, area. And he, he actually aspired uh, that, that the region to become the pioneer in agro-processing. Now, agro-processing uh, provides uh, sustainable economic growth, poverty reduction, and uh, food uh, security. So in addition to the region program of advancing agriculture, as I said, I'm in the region, and uh, then well, I can tell you, I have ob observed that uh, many of the residents here are really involved in uh, uh, horticulture and has actually uh, established, say, sort of uh, backyard gardens that produce a wide range of vegetables. I saw some tomatoes, uh, onions, spinach, and green pepper. So you can see that uh, the region is really involved in, in, in the horticulture. Now, in this context, uh, the theme was actually deliber uh, uh, deliberately chosen in order for us to adequately interrogate the potential of the Omusati region on uh, improving the horticulture and crop farming value chain for self-employment. Uh, now, the panel of experts on the topic will further unpack the theme. That brings us to exactly that question. So apart from being intentional, about the topic and to make sure that it is relevant to the constituency, to the region where this lecture is taking place. From where, from where I stand, a key feature of the lectures 
have thus far been how the panels have been constituted and the expertise that they bring to the table. Talk to us about who the panelists will be this time around and what is the expertise that they will indeed bring to the series. So the panel members will be made up of uh, the Honorable Netumbo Nandindaitwa, our Deputy Prime Minister, and Minister of International, uh, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. She will actually just do the uh, introduction remarks. The panelists of experts uh, 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 include uh, Dr. Fidelis Nyambe Mwanzi. He is the Chief Executive Officer of at the Namibian Agronomic Board and uh, Dr. Ausiku Pietres. He is a scientist and lecturer of crop science at the University of Namibia, Rongo Campus. No. And uh, Mr. Eric Pietres who is the acting director of agriculture, production, extension, and engineering services. He is from the Ministry of Agriculture, Water, and Forestry. Mm. And the last panelist will be uh, Mr. Oswat Manyangapo, He's a full-time communal farmer at the Musati region. And the lecture will be moderated by Mr. Gervasius Kashindi, who is the chief regional officer of Musati Regional Council. So as you can see, the panelists are well-known and are experts in the field of agriculture, agronomic and horticulture sector, and also food self-sufficiency and green economic uh, from the uh, uh, farming perspective. It promises to be a riveting engagement. Madam Makali, thank you very much for your time and best of luck with the final preparations. Please travel back safely in the end. Thank you, Denver. Just to say that uh, we are really encouraging to invite the public, especially the youth in the Mustachi region, to come and tune or tune in virtually on NBC and the Mirko uh, Facebook uh, live streaming. The lecture is actually tomorrow, Friday, would we'll start 10 o'clock to, to, to 12 o'clock in the morning, and the venue will be at the Musati Regional Council Hall in Otapi, Musati Region. Everybody is welcome to, to attend.